Hi everybody, Jo here again. Welcome to another Mindful Monday session with me. And I have to say thank you to all those lovely ladies who've messaged me saying that although you're not going along the journaling journey with me, you're picking up hints and tips that you're using in your card making and you're actually just enjoying the session. So do you know what? That's fabulous. And I'm hoping that by doing that, we can grow our community on here. And I'm hoping that, you know, you'll realise this isn't just about journaling, that everything we're doing here, we can do on a card. And, you know, I do think sometimes we pigeonhole things, you know, such as MDF work, journaling, card making. We're just crafters. Well, I shouldn't say just, should I? Because do you know what? We're fabulous people and we are and we do some lovely artwork. Me, I can't draw for toffee. But then that's why there's Tracy, because she can do the drawing for me and I can do my doodly bits. And that way I can pretend I'm drawing. So it is lovely to have your company. Now, today, we're going to be creating a piece in the larger journal. I'm just going to move this out of the way at the minute. I always like to have something for you to look at when we just welcome. Now, as you know, I'm working in the larger journal and we're going to create a piece today using this card. So if you missed this, I created this last Tuesday. And what I'm doing is I'm sort of doing a bit of a, I didn't want to do a journaling um, YouTube and actually just show you a piece that I'm making for a card. So what I'm going to be doing sometimes, not every week, but is creating a piece on a Tuesday that is a card design, but then hopefully coming back the following Monday and showing you how I can incorporate that into my journal and add almost like the journaling features to it. So I hope that makes sense and I hope you enjoy that. And also that way we're covering all bases as well. And I might just entice some of you card makers into the journaling and let you realise it's not scary. It's actually a lovely process. Now, I did promise at the beginning of this there are two sizes of journals. And I'm working on the larger one, but I did promise you I would do some work in my smaller journal for those of you. And I know there's quite a few of you that are using the smaller journal. So what I've created is this lovely piece. Well, I think it's lovely in my small journal. And I'm going to recreate that now on this side of my page here. So all the designs, if you think about it, can be. It's quite funny, sometimes we have a problem with scale and to me I can scale up and scale down. So a lot of the things we do, such as here, it's a double page spread. Now I'm going to create this on here. Well, hopefully that's the plan. And I'll just possibly pop my birds closer together and give myself more um, of our surrounding, more of the stencil work, which obviously is beautiful. I love stencil work. So I could always add a bit of extra text if I want. I may do that. I don't know. I'm afraid there's no real plan, just a, a sort of an idea. And often that's the thing with crafting, isn't it? You sort of come up with an idea and it grows. And I love that, you know. So I'm hoping you'll join me. If you've got your smaller journal or your larger, we're going to be using whichever one you're comfortable with. So I'm going to put that there to give me an idea. Now, as you know, in my journal, I'm doing random pages because for me, that's just the sort of being spontaneous. Now, my idea is to do my stencil work on this side and add this beautiful piece on here. And I love that. So that's my plan. And you know me, I'll try and show you as best as I can, but it's not easy. <laughs> now, I have got a few inclusions, so I'm just going to take anything like my bulldog clips, my lovely things I'm going to take out. And I've got a few pages with embellishments. And by the way, look, the glitter is still there. I sprinkle it. Beautiful what we did, what we added last week. But for my stencil work, if I was stamping, I would add something hard underneath. But I'm thinking, I think I'll be okay for my stencil work. And you know what? We shall see. So I'm going to start with our lovely stickers. 
Now, as you know, these sticker stencils you get four. And I thought we'd use these two birds. I'm calling them songbirds. I don't know what birds they are. So please don't shout at me if you know they are specific ones. In my head, the songbirds. And I'm just going to take the outer bits. And I have to say, I have used these so much and they do remain tacky. But if you use them an awful lot and they lost their tackiness, you can just wash them in warm soapy water. A little bit of, you know, fairy liquid. You know, other liquids are available. Um, and then just leave them to dry that way up and the tackiness will come back. Look, I hate to say it, I think I've actually got an Eric dog hair on there. That's how sticky they are. Now... I want mine facing, don't I? I wonder if I can put them both on at the same time. So let's see if we pop him there. I'm having that as a him and this is a her. I don't know, obviously, if that's what Tracy had in mind, but in my head, that's what we've got. Should I put the her slightly above? No, I better not. She better not talk down to him, had she? We'll put them on the same level. There we go. Now, as you see, I've been stamping in permanent ink, so I've got a slight discoloration here, but I don't mind. They still work really well. And we're going to start with some Della Blue. So I'm going to be using a few ink pads and I'm going to keep to the colours that I used on my original on this one, just so we keep that continuity. And we get that look that it's all, you know, it all looks a good cohesive design. So we've got Della Blue, Sundance, Violet Chalk and the all-important Graphite. It's such a worker colour, this. So where's my blue? Della Blue. And as always, on the lid. And I'm just going to put some on my um, actual mask first on my stencil and then bring it in now my blue is um, quite well used now so it's not as important to do that I can actually come in to the stencil look but when it's new so I do keep the habit of even though I know I'm okay I like to just pop it on the stencil first I don't want to get out of that habit and put it straight on. And I'm just adding a little bit of shape to start off with. So I'm just coming in all the way around. And I think that's enough blue. I can always go back and add more. So, Violet Chalk next. So, where's my Violet Chalk stencil brush? Here we go. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit in the middle here. So, my Violet Chalk is a stronger colour. And again, you will get to know your ink pads. It's a little bit like, I don't know about you ladies, do you know your oven? You know, some people's ovens, even though it might say 220 or say Gas Mark 5, your oven might be hotter. Isn't it funny? Um... And I always think if you move somewhere if you, or if you get a new oven, it takes a little while to get used to it. Because I do think some are slightly different to others. But again, I don't know if that's just me. Mind you not that I do much cooking. I do enough to get by. Oh, I've got a bit of competition now that Elliot's at school. He said um, the cottage pie at school was very good last week, the other week. So I've got a bit of competition now because obviously grandma has to have the best cottage pie, don't I? So, right, on with the purple. Sorry, I digress. And I just want to add some purple in the middle just to add a nice purpley tone. And the same on both. Now, again, you could, I mean, you could make this a robin for Christmas. And I know as soon as I mention it, I know you ladies are so fabulous. Somebody's going to go off and make a robin I tell you this because obviously I haven't got the time, but I'm sure you will. I'm sure there's going to be a lovely Robin card appearing ready for Christmas. A little bit of purple in the middle. Right, lid on that. And then I want to come in with my yellow, my Sundance. And if you bear with me, I've got a little, I love these, the number three brushes. Now my yellow is quite a strong colour. 
and I just want some yellow for the beak. So again, I'm just going onto the stencil and then just dragging the colour. Oh, look, I've got another hair, sorry. Right, I must do some housework in my craft room. And then with the yellow, I just want some highlight on the back of the head and down the back. With these, you know, just because we've got a stencil, we don't have to do it just one colour. It's nice to add some, some sort of tones. And again, because I'm going to be adding the sun, just want it to catch and almost heat the back of our lovely songbirds. I'll pop the lid on the yellow. And then in with the grey. Now I've got a little brush somewhere for grey, there we go. And I get into the lid. Now grey is quite a strong colour. So I just want to come in and add a little bit of almost texture to the feet. And the same over here. And these little brushes are perfect for this. And then what I want to do is just on the front here, just almost add a bit of shape, a bit under his chin there. And what you can do, can you see, on the tail, if I sort of come up this way, we can sort of get lines as though we've got feathers. I don't know if I lift up, I don't know if you can see that. It just sort of doing it in that direction and it gives you a deeper colour here. I love doing things like this. So I'll add a bit on here as well. And again, I'm flipping upwards. So when I've got the most ink on, I'll catch the end, the tail. And then a little bit on her front. And almost let's give her a, a chin here and just come round. And I'm just going to peel that one back slightly. I'm going to put it back down. But look at that, you could literally leave it. If I just lift it up a little, look. Look how beautiful. I think that's looking really beautiful. But I want to add a little bit of stamping, so I'm going to pop that back down. I do love this, you know, I could spend ages just with my inks, sort of creating shape and texture. I hope I'm not the only one. I am hope you, and you know, if you've not had a go at doing this, please have a go because it's such a lovely thing to do. Now I'm going to add my Sacred Spells script stamp to add a little bit more detail. Now I've got it across, an arrow I mean on mine because I'm liable to stamp this upside down. And I'm going to use black for this. Oh, actually, before I do, good thinking. Do you know, glad Eric's here to remind me. I just want to go round with my fine liner. And I'm going to do that before I stamp. I'll tell you why, because I don't want to smudge the stamping. You know, I have a bit of a thing about smudging things. So, very carefully, now I may put my head in. I'm just going to go round and I like to do this while the stencil's in place and it almost, I love it because it gives me that almost hand drawn look and if my pen goes over the stencil, don't worry, it doesn't matter but again, just take your time you know, after all, this is Mindful Monday so there's no need to rush And there is something lovely about just slowing down. I think sometimes when we make ourselves slow down, you know, it does make you just uh, relax a little. So if my voice goes a bit quieter, it's just because, you know, in honest truth, I am just relaxing and having fun and having a lovely, lovely time. And I must thank you for popping into my craft room with me and spending some time with me. Eric is here under my desk asleep. 
and for some reason today he's actually decided to lie right under my desk and under my chair so it's quite uncomfortable because I've nowhere to put my feet right I'm happy with that I nearly forgot that right so let's get some uh but it wouldn't have mattered I could have done it after but I do worry about smudging and you see the ink stays wet longer on the stencil so let's do this one first now I'm doing this organically so that means I'm not using a stamping block just because I want to be able to almost feel oh that's nice and you know if I need a little bit extra I can just add a little bit extra and also it's heavier in some places and lighter in others which is what I want I don't want it to be perfect so again let's have a look here and the main thing is I get it the right way up and I can press and I can see so I can just press exactly where right let's lift up Oh, that's nice. Now I'm just going to give my stencil a bit of a wipe with my inky binky. Pop that back. Right, I'm going to peel these off. I'm just going to put, look at that. Let me just, no space. If I just bring that closer to show you. I think that's so lovely. Now, this would make a lovely anniversary card, you know, even a wedding card. Now, just to clean my stencils, I'm going to put them on a non-stick -craft, non craft sheet, just because for me, that's the easiest way for me to do it. I'm going to pop them down. I've got a cloth here that's got water on, and I'm just going to rub with water. That's all it is. And then in with my inky binky to dry it. And the reason I do it on here is just so that I don't brush any ink. If I put it back on my carry sheet, I may transfer some ink onto the carry sheet or onto the um, inny stencil. So I'd rather do it on there. And then those will go straight back. Look, lift that up. And this is where it's like doing a jigsaw. Just pop it back. And the other one. Again, same thing. Pop it back on. And then they go away. Now, back to our little piece here. So let's add some grounding. And again, I'm loving the way the hill masks work in this. I really am. So turn it round and we're going to go for purple. You could choose any of the colours. But we'll go for purple and let's see if I can catch the two feet. I can there look. So and again I'm starting off the mask and I want some nice rich colour at the base here. And this is the textured one. So again, I love the texture and I just love the way it almost looks rough here. And almost to me that will enhance any marks I get with my brush and I'm more than happy with that. Now while I've got my ink pads, I'm just going to grab my grey. This is where we get good with one hand, isn't it? And my little, and let's add a little bit of shadow. So we'll just add a bit of grey look under our songbirds and this one here so under her feet and then there'll be a little bit just to add a little bit more detail because I can now obviously I'm not sure how much you can see I'm just going to go over the page with my purple and then I'll try and move it to show you I definitely need a bigger space for these don't I so in with the grey and just add a little bit more 
where her tail is. There we go. So I'll put the lid on the grey. And the best way I can do this look is turn it upside down. And we'll just match this on over here. Now I know I'm going to put my topper on this side, aren't I? But I still want a bit of that continuity. And that's what I love with a double page spread. If you're sticking a piece of artwork on that you've already done, it's nice to just have some continuity behind. Let's pick up that ink off there. We don't want to waste it and leave it. Let's use it on here. Lovely. And again, make sure I just clean this mask before putting it back. Now, I've got my stencil, my um, fan brush in water, so I just want a little bit of faux bleaching down here. So while we add our stencil work, I'm just going to put some little drops of water and let it start to faux bleach. Yeah, that's really pretty, that. Let's have a our moon. So again, the circle mass, you get your inny and your outy. I'm going to put this right above the two of them. And I'm actually going to start, I'm really into drawing at the minute with my fine liner. And I think doing the, the um, journals has really enhanced that with me. I just love doing that sketchy look. And in fact, while I've got it, look, just going to, and again, this is very rough because I want it to look sketchy. I'm just going to add the line all the way along here. And I'm just going to sketch in. Now, I could stamp some grass. We've got some lovely grass stamps, but I want it to look very sketchy. So I'm just going to do that. And then let's add some yellow. And of course, the yellow one's the bottom of the pile. I'm just going to come in with the same colour. I want to keep the same colour tones. So we'll go straight in bit deeper down here just to add a almost give a bit more texture so do it deeper down there there we go and what I will actually do is add a couple of faux bleach into that just gives extra or oh, you'd be amazed the difference And I'm just going to wipe my hill mask before putting it away. And then I'm just going to pat that a little because I don't want it to overfill bleach. That's just enough. Like I say, you could do this design on a card. There's nothing here that isn't, you know, card worthy. Or as I say, in your small journal. And I'm just going to give that a bit of a, a bit of a dry. But I love this. And it adds to the texture even more. Now, we've got a lovely stencil. And this one is called Replenish. And the reason I've gone for this look is it's got the gorgeous hearts in. And I'm thinking with this, I just want it to be that sort of lovely, sort of romantic design. I'm going to add my stenciling in the background, but I want to mix my colours. So I want my yellow and I want my blue. And obviously where they mix, we will get green. So bear with me because I keep saying I haven't much room. And in my head, I want to do yellow around where the, the sun is and blue at the sort of other places. So if I start with the blue first look, so I'm going to have blue in that corner and we'll go through the stencil and blue in this corner. And again, I'm just holding it down in my hand and I can see where we've put the birds look. So I know I won't go over the birds. Now, normally I would tickle the stencil, but because this is quite textured, you can actually add quite a bit. And then I'm going to come in with the yellow. 
and again we'll go bright all round where this sun is. And come back with the blue and just go over that join a bit. Let's have a look, see if we get, oh yes, we're getting some green tones there, you see. lift that up so look at that can you see we've got those lovely blue and green tones and the yellow in the middle so we just need to carry that on she says so if I move that here I'll just work in this area so I'm going to come in with the blue. Now the bit of my stencil that I'm using has actually got yellow on so I'll still get quite a greeny tone which is quite nice because it gives extra, look at that, gives me that extra colour. So where I've got yellow on here I'll actually use that. Now this side as I say my card design is going here so I just want it round the edge so I think we're going to need some down here because there's no point me wasting ink stenciling the whole page when I don't need it. Yep. And then across the top. And then we'll just do this corner. And again, the beauty of this is I've just gone off camera, sorry, but obviously I can't move it. The beauty of this is, you can do this quite quickly. And, and it's a lovely feel to just lift it up. And I'm just going to check if I move this over, look. So that will just go in there. And I love it because we're using the similar colours. Yeah, happy with that. So I shall put my stencil to one side and clean it later. And I'm just going to put my lids on my ink pad because as always I haven't much room. Put my stencil brushes back in my pot. Now another thing that's lovely in journaling is faux stitching. Now again, um, it was popular in card making quite a few years ago but as most things they, they come in and out of fashion so we're just going to add some faux stitching along the bottom here with the fine liner now don't be over some people use a ruler some people and, and that's fine if that if you're happy with that but one thing I will say is this is a journal and it's a handmade, handcrafted journal. And I don't actually want it to look perfect. I don't want these to be all the same size. I don't want them to look in a perfect straight line. You know, for me, I'm happy with that. I um, was watching a programme once with a lady who made leather belts. And she actually, she was a saddler. She made saddles. But as a sideline, she made leather belts and leather... Um, little handbags and she sewed everything by hand but she said that every so often she made sure she put a smaller stitch or a larger stitch in just to make it look even more handmade and she did that because when she learned her trade and was a machinist that's one thing they were told was that if it looks too perfect it can actually put people off so I sort of carry that in mind and I think, do you know what, don't pressure, I mean we're supposed to be enjoying this anyway, but it looks better, almost that sketchy little bit of, and so I like that. I just wonder, do you know what, I'm going to add it down the side as well. Oh, <laughs> I definitely need a bigger desk. I'd love to know. So are any of you doing the larger journal as well? Okay, what size are you doing? Is it the large one? Because do you know what? I'd love to know if you struggle with um, space or is it just me? 
I'm actually going to put a double row on here. And again, I'm not purposely matching the stitching up, just going for it. And what I like to do is I like to add myself a little bow. So this side, just add some stitching here. And then a double row. I mean, if you're clever, you can do all sorts of look. You can put a couple of little crosses in, a couple of little cross stitches. I mean, again, you can really experiment with this. Now, I need a sentiment. And it's got to be love you. It's got to be, hasn't it? Now, where's my scissors? So, again, I'm using my scissors to decide. I mean, see, I'm thinking of it over the moon. But I think, see, do I like it in the middle? not good with things in the middle I quite like it offset but then or do I like it down there or actually I'm thinking if I cut it up put love there and you there yeah and then I've got to just put my black line round my nice sketchy like I say, if you're stuck for an anniversary card, this would be lovely. And I'm just gonna, now again, don't judge me on this, but just here, just here, I'm just gonna put my name and on this one, I'm gonna write Carl. Now that's not for anybody else to see, but us too. So I know that's us too. Right, and I'm going to put that on there. Oh, I have to say that's lovely. Now, somewhere I've got a little embellishment from my stash. And I'm thinking, yeah. Now, the good thing is this bippity boppity glue will actually glue your metal embellishments. Look, I've put this one in with bippity boppity glue. And sometimes it's worth knowing things like that. So a little bit of that on the back and it dries clear does just take a few minutes to dry though so I'm going to put that there just going to go around it with my fine liner yep and then we've got to have some Posca splats just because so give it a good shake and I'm going to start with some little ones over the sun because I think they'll show up well there. And then some little ones over the birds. And I like to just add a bit of Posca to my metal embellishment as well, just at the top, a bit of highlight. Right, and then and this is where I have to be careful not to actually get the camera and I'm just going to add a few on the other side. Oh, the postman's just walked past the window. <laughs> Please don't ring the doorbell because I won't be answering, mister. Can we get a big one over the moon? Yeah, there we go. Love that. So if I bring that up to show you, what do you think? Of course, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. Now, while that's just drying, let's just, we need to add this. So a few of you have asked how to actually add things to your journal and it's really up to you. Everybody has different ways. You know I'm a belt and braces girl and that means I cover everything. So for me, I use double-sided tape, I use finger lift and then I use the bitty boppity glue. I put tape round the edge, but I always put a piece of tape diagonally as well, just to save your card. If you ever glued anything down and you have a bubble in the middle, if you put something diagonally, it pulls all ways. So what I do is I take the middle one off, and then these, I turn them all over. 
And again, hopefully it's quick with it being finger lift tape. And we'll just, there we go. And then what I do is I take my glue and I put this cover the rest of the area, look. And with my finger, I just, especially near the edges, I just brush it out so it's covered. Lovely. Give my finger a quick wipe. Now, if I bring my journal page back, can you see? And then this way, I've got a bit of time as to where I want to put it. And I think it's going to go just there. So I can actually put it down and I tend to use my kitchen towel in case my hands are dirty. And I just need to check, oh, that needs to come down a bit there. So you see, because it's not completely stuck down, I've got that bit of wiggle time there. And once I'm happy, I just slide the tape off and I use my kitchen towel just to check that those edges. So again, the last one here, and as look, as it slides out, you can just press. Because the last thing you want to do is put dirty finger mark. And that's beautifully stuck down now. Now I think we need, last thing, a little bit of glitter on here. So I'm going to come in with my stardust. <laughs> so if you can hear that, that's a certain lady who shall remain nameless who suddenly decided to talk to me. So... As always, I put a little bit of my Stickles Glitter Glue on my mat because obviously sometimes it can be a bit rude, it has wind. And let's just put some nice sparkle. And I'm just brushing it on because that way I can decide exactly where I want it. And we'll have a little bit on the beak. I don't want to overcook it. A little bit just here where I've put. Oh, you see, I think that's pretty. Then on this side, we'll just add a little bit on the beak for continuity. And a little bit on some of the lovely. I don't want too much. I think... Oh, the lid's falling off. And I just need to mop that up, otherwise, you know what will happen? And I'm happy with that. Let me show you. So that's the page we've done. Let's just zoom in at those birds. Look, aren't they beautiful? That little bit of sparkle look. And then this is the other page. So when it's open, the two, if I can, so it's not easy to show you, I can't go out any further. So when it's open together, I just think that looks so lovely, the continuity of that. And then if I bring in the smaller one, just to remind you, this is just an idea of how you can use your smaller journal. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope... If you're a card maker, it's giving you some ideas for cards. And if you're doing a journal along with me, I'd love to see what you do. If you're not happy sharing it, that's fine. I totally understand. It, it is just for you after all. But maybe you could make a card. That would be nice. And maybe you could share that with us all. So this is my little Carl and me popping in, obviously with Eric, just to check you're okay. As always, thank you for joining me. And thank you for all your support. And guess what? I'll see you again next week. You take care, everybody. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now. <laughs>